Hello there, my name's Professor Nemo. Sorry, I'm a bit excited. Today's my first day working at the SCP Foundation. I'm very excited for this new career opportunity. Anyway, I was told to look through these and sort through these files, so let's get started. The first file we'll be looking at today is SCP-C40 and SCP-C41. Object class, Euclid and Keter, respectively. So, this file has two SCPs? Okay. Special Containment Procedures SCP-C40 and SCP-C41 are both to be kept in 20 foot by 20 foot containment cells, with various cat toys and such thrown about it, and are to be kept as far away from each other as possible. If they see each other for even a second, SCP-C40 will begin to chase SCP-C41 and have a quill ensue. Well, that makes sense. They are a cat and mouse. Description. SCP-C40 is a large semi-humanoid bluish-gray cat. SCP-C41 is a small semi-humanoid brown mouse. And as such, are prone to cat and mouse chases. During these chases, SCP-C40 will become solely focused on chasing the mouse, ignoring everything and everyone else. This one-track mind makes it dangerous, as it is liable to destroy anything that gets in the way of its goal. Unfortunately, SCP-341 is a clever little creature, with intelligence rivaling some of the most brilliant humans, that's not saying much, and is able to easily outsmart SCP-C40. Unfortunately, this also means that SCP-C41 has escaped containment time after time, Recently, we have gone as low as to bribe him with cheese in order to stay, but this method is quickly eating up our foundation monetary resources, and we may need to look into other options. Okay, so, so far, this seems to be basic, hyper-intelligent animals. The most fascinating thing about these two creatures is the fact that they can both, seemingly, summon a variety of objects out of thin air, which is an ability shared by many SCP-Cs. These items can range anywhere from baseball bats, fishing rods, and yo-yos, to more violent objects, such as mallets, anvils, and even explosives. These animals can summon bombs! Why? Another fascinating feature is their durability. These two have survived nearly everything in their pursuit to end each other, including, but not limited to, being stabbed, shot, blown up, crushed, poisoned, ran over, beheaded, and being disintegrated. I'm sorry, what? These things are more durable than SCP-682. Wait, how do I know what that is? Anyway, um... These creatures have died on occasion, but have always quickly come back to life. It appears that this hearing factor is natural and not something they actively control, as they cannot even die even when they want to, this was evidenced during one occasion, where both SCPs attempted to commit suicide? What did I just read? What? So, the cat and the mouse both got dumped, and then tried to unalive themselves? Whatever, I, I need to move on. Great, another mouse. SCP-C28 Object Class, Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-C28 is currently not able to be contained, as it has escaped every one of our environments we have put it in. However, we have closed off the area in which it most commonly resides, and cover stories have been being spread to cover up any harm it may cause. So, this thing is just out there? That seems... irresponsible. Description, SCP-C28 is a large rodent-like monster with ink-black fur. It also commonly is seen wearing white overalls and a captain's hat. It also carries with it a large wooden steering wheel with its spoke sharpened to a point. This creature was first discovered in the Mississippi River, where it was found attacking cruise ships and murdering all the passengers. I'm sorry, what? And we're letting it do so? Why? This creature has several anonymous abilities that make it both a threat 
and nearly impossible to contain. First, it has incredible strength, far more than the average human. It can easily break through walls, tear apart human limbs, and even bite straight through metal. Its second anomalous ability is its sheer durability. The creature's body appears to be made of an inky, malleable substance with inconsistent consistency. Not only does this allow the creature to stretch its limbs to remarkable distances, it also allows it to quickly regenerate from any wound it's been given. Its ability to stretch its body has also made it hard to contain, as it will squeeze through any cracks it can find. Okay, well, I, I feel like we should at least do something, or at least try. Oh, it looks like this file was recently updated. Recently, a former member of the O5 Council was able to find a potential way of controlling the creature, possibly leading to its eventual containment. Though the agent was reluctant to do so, not wanting to compromise the being's free will, the other members elected to try this method. The method, however, is classified, as revealing it will greatly spoil the novel, available now on Amazon.com, that Nerd Comics Inc. was hired to illustrate for? Wait, are we shilling now? Okay, that was weird. On to the next file. Item number SCP-C99. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. Further containment of SCP-C99 is unnecessary, as long as SCP-C90B is in Foundation custody. Okay, so it's safe. Let's look at the image, and that is a freaking dragon. Okay. 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 Description. SCP-C99 is a large, two-headed dragon. Half of its body is green, while the other half is purple. The dragon is bipedal with two arms and two feathery wings, which can fly despite all laws of physics. This entity, as well as several others, were found when two children discovered a strange, multicolored dragon scale. Upon making contact with the scale, the two children would be transported into an alternate dimension that was simply called Dragonland. As one may have surmised by the name, Dragonland is almost entirely populated by draconic entities. Though there were a vast number of entities, the two children spent most of their time with four SCPs, a smaller pink dragon, a large and gluttonous blue dragon, a surprisingly powerful mystic golden dragon, and SCP-C99. As mentioned, SCP-C99 is a hydra, though this does not seem to be a natural condition. Instead, it appears to be akin to human conjoined twins. They also appear to enjoy being like this, as the opportunity came for them to be separated, but they refused. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Many disabled people don't mind having a disability. I myself am deaf, and I wouldn't change that for the world. I only even wear my hearing aids when I have to talk to especially stupid people. Anyway, got on a tangent there. The two dragons seem to be opposite in many ways. While the male green dragon, Zack, is very cautious, neat, and organized, the female purple dragon, Wheezy, is very bold, hyper, and unorganized. The two dragons also have golden amulets around their necks, which is commonplace for dragons of this world. These amulets appear to bend to their own personality, and appear to glow whenever they conquer their worst character flaw. For SCP-C99, the amulet glows whenever the two heads work together. So, they wear necklaces that are constantly judging them? Okay, fine, what did you do with the two kids that found the dragon scale? 
Recently, the Foundation has captured the Dragon Scale and amnesticized the two children. Um... You know, at this point, I'm just happy you didn't kill them. Okay, one more file for today. Strange that they only make me put away four files each day, but fine by me. Item number SCP-C223. Object class, Keta. Special Containment Procedures. When recaptured... SCP-C223 is to be contained in a 20-foot by 20-foot containment cell, surrounded by a circle of salt, as well as various religious iconography and sigils. Wait, what do you mean by when recaptured? Is this thing loose? <sighs> Under no circumstances is a personnel allowed to have any contact with the entity. Description. SCP-C223 is a demonic entity. It appears to be humanoid, except it has long deer-like legs and ears resembling a deer. It is often carrying around a seemingly sentient microphone walking stick, with a single red eye attached to it, and is often seen wearing a well-trimmed red suit. Not much is known about SCP-C223, but we do know that it is quite powerful. It has been observed to shapeshift, specifically growing antlers when it is angry, teleport, spawn various chains and tentacles, and has some instances of pyrokinesis. During what few interviews we have had with the entity, it has been shown to be quite talkative, speaking in a voice that sounds like a 1930s to 40s era radio broadcast. Some have even gone as far as to describe this demon's voice as ASMR-like? No. No, un under no circumstances should you find a demon voice relaxing. Whatever. However, the most dangerous thing about this entity is its propensity for deals. This demon is known for making backhanded Faustian bargains with people, most times stealing their souls in the process. In fact, it was one of these deals that allowed SCP-C223 to escape. We managed to contain the entity for seven years straight. However, one day, the entity managed to lure D-Class personnel to its containment cell. He then offered the D-Class a deal. If the D-Class was able to release him, he would erase all memory of the death sentence the D-Class was given. The D-Class accepted the deal and released the Entity, who then killed the D-Class and erased all memory of him. Wait, then how is this file still here? You know what, it doesn't matter. However, we also believe that making one of these deals with the Entity might be the key to recontaining- Nope. Nope, nope, no! Under no circumstances should you make a Faustian bargain with a demonic entity. That is common knowledge. What is wrong with these people? Maybe I should go to the underground lair and tell this to the stupid O5 council faces, but... Wait, how did I know they had an underground lair? Wait, what are you doing? Hello, the name's Professor Nemo. Sorry, I'm a bit excited. Today's my first day working at the SCP- Hey, are you Professor Nemo, by chance? 